Hey guys and welcome to this short video in which I would like to talk about UUIDs. Basically, a UUID is a 128-bit number that likes to be represented in hexadecimal and separated by dashes. So the whole thing is more compact and readable compared to decimal or even binary representation. This UUID can now be used, for example, to identify entries of a database. We know that we can, for example, use a consecutive number to assign an ID and thus a primary key, and you can be sure that this number will always be unique. So why should we use this internally long UUID? And can it actually happen that these are generated twice, which means that there is a collision? For that, let's review the basic idea of a UUID. As the name already makes clear, it is not only about a unique identifier, but also about a universally unique identifier. And what is meant by this is that this UUID is not only unique within a specific dataset, but universal, so everywhere. And the nice thing about generating such a UUID is that there is no central registration authority that manages and assigns these IDs. We know this system from international book numbers, for example, the so-called ISBNs. With such an ISBN, a specific book can be uniquely identified. However, this only works because these numbers are managed and assigned centrally when they are requested. But how does this work with UUIDs that do not require an internet connection or any kind of central registration authority? First of all, it should be mentioned that there are different versions of UUIDs. Version 1, for example, includes the unique MAC address and timestamp in the ID, so that it is virtually impossible to recreate this UUID on another device. The problem with this approach, however, is that it could be used to draw conclusions about the origin. Version 4, on the other hand, is the version that is currently widely used and generates a UUID completely randomly. And this is exactly the point where many wonder how it can then be that they can still be unique. After all, if I roll a die completely randomly, I will surely roll the same numbers after a few times. The truth is that such a collision is actually not completely impossible, but so close as to be practically impossible. And for this, let's take a quick look at some numbers and illustrate the whole thing again with a comparison. We have 128 bits available, but 6 bits are needed to include metadata like the version number. So we are left with 122 bits. Randomly generated, we can provide 2 to the power of 122 possibilities. So written out in decimal notation, exactly this many possibilities. That's a pretty darn big number. So if we generate two UUIDs, the probability of a collision is correspondingly one to this number, which is extremely small and therefore can be regarded as practically impossible. Quite rightly, however, one can now ask how this looks if we generate not just two, but thousands and millions of UUIDs. For this purpose, we look at the following number experiment. Let's assume that we generate 1 million UUIDs per second and we do so continuously. After one year, we will have generated that many. We see that there are still plenty of IDs left. But what is the probability now that there is any collision among these assigned ones? At this point, I would like to point out the birthday problem. Simply put, as the number of generated UUIDs increases, it of course becomes more and more likely that there is a collision. Approximately, we can use this formula to calculate how many UUIDs needs to be generated to get a collision with a certain probability. So let's say we want to calculate how many UUIDs we need to generate to have a collision with a 10% probability. We end up with this number here, which by the way means a memory requirement of just under 17 million terabytes for the 128-bit UUIDs alone. With our previous example, this would mean that we would have to generate 1 million UUIDs per second for over 33,564 years in order to then have a collision with a 10% probability. These are huge numbers and I hope to illustrate how unlikely a collision actually is, but also that it is not theoretically impossible. But is this actually a problem or rather what would happen if a collision did occur? As always, it depends. If there is a collision in our local database, the entry would not be saved, because this field is probably marked as unique. But that would only mean that we have to just try again and then probably not have a collision again. 
If there is the same UUID somewhere else in the world, we probably don't even get that. A great advantage of UUIDs is that we can merge several datasets and still have unique identifiers. If we would only use consecutive numbers, we would have to do some kind of mapping when we merge these entries. And if there is a collision of UUIDs during this merging, that will also have to be handled. However, a separate video could be made about the advantages and disadvantages of UUIDs and also about their suitable purposes. But it is certain that collisions are practically impossible and in most cases not a serious problem. And you can think about it very well in advance. Okay, that should be it so far. I hope you enjoyed the video and of course I'm happy about comments, ratings and a subscription. Would be nice to see you again in another video and have a great day. Thanks for watching.